You're listening to the Tan Talk Radio Network. Yeah, I like this one here, Rebel. Yeah. The sound of the revolution. Yes, indeed. We got to come together. We got to come together. The revolution will not be televised. All righty then, uh, welcome to the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. I'm your host, Bruce Wright. I'm here with my co-host, Crown Dion. Crown. And Crown is actually, that's his song playing right now, and uh, it's uh, called Revolution. And how apropos for this show, this is our maiden voyage for the Revolutionary Radio Show. And I got to put my glasses on because I'm the old guy on the show here. And uh, I just want to let you know about the Revolutionary Radio Show. It is a production of the Revolutionary Caucus and Squatter Records. It is a radio show committed to promoting revolutionary radical ideas through political engagement, discussion, music, art, and culture. And as I mentioned before, it's hosted by myself, Reverend Bruce Wright, and also local hip-hop artist Crown Dion, with our regular special guest co-host, housing rights and community activist Connie Burton, who is on the line. Connie, are you there? Yes, I am. Welcome, Connie, to the maiden voyage of our show. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Ready to go. Well, we're going to have a pretty exciting show, I hope, today. Uh, a little bit later in the show, Connie's going to give us kind of a, a report on what's happening over in Tampa, particularly as it relates to uh, economic and social justice issues and uh, police containment and all kinds of things like that. She's over on the other side of the pond in Tampa and uh, will give us some info on what's going on. Later on in the show, we will also uh, be getting a report from Crown at an event that he went to uh, this past Sunday. Uh, quickly tell us what that event was. Well, it was uh, it was called a 10 by 10 you know, taking control of our block. And uh, it was just a beautiful, beautiful uh, representation and presentation by the chairman, um, also by Penny Hess. Um, and it's just um, really summing up what we need to do to take commu- control of our own community, control of our own blocks. And uh, it, it was just a beautiful presentation today. It just had, really had to be there, but I'm pretty sure you can see it on the Huru News or Huru TV. Yeah, and that happens to be one of our sponsors. I'll mention our sponsors in just a moment. I I, I want to first give a, just a special shout-out to St. Petersburg Acupuncture, who is one of our main sponsors of this show. They're located at 1624 Central Avenue in St. Petersburg, and you can call them at 727-823-1700. That's St. Petersburg Acupuncture, 1624 Central Avenue in beautiful St. Petersburg, Call them at 727-623, or I'm sorry, did I say 623? I meant 823-1700. That's 727-823-1700. I'll mention our other sponsors in a little bit, but I wanted to let you know, as many know, uh, this is Black History Month, Hmm. and as a a feature of our show, uh, particularly this month, we are going to be talking about a lot of things related to black history. Uh, Our special guest today, actually... uh, knows all, uh, quite a bit about particularly one aspect of uh, black history, and that was Dr. King's Poor People's Movement. She is the national coordinator of the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign and was a former vice presidential candidate for the Green Party, Sherry Honkala. And she's going to be our guest. She'll be on in just a moment. But I wanted you guys to just kind of know a little bit more of what's going to make the Revolutionary Road a kind of unique show. And... uh uh, my co-host here, Crown, is going to share that with you real quick to let you know some of the future things we're going to talk about. Well, the topics also on the show was going to include police state, uh, police brutality, hip-hop, punk as revolutionary art forms, anti-war and peace, racism, sexism, homophobia, of course, poverty and class, um, definitely as uh, was covered today as well, the prison industrial complex, dismantling capitalism, 
radical poetry and art, artist interviews, interviews with activists, writers, musicians, historians, poets, localism, mutualism, decentralizing authority or decentralized authority, consensus and decision making, radical ecology, ecology and egalitarianism. So basically, uh, just got to join the revolution. Yes, join the revolution. Join the it, revolution, man. This is, this is not a show for the squeamish. Um, we are going to cover topics that many do not want to talk about on talk radio, That's particularly right. from the perspective that we are going to be giving. But we're real excited to do that. And, and, and I just want to let you know, um, this show is uh, not only live streamed on the Internet as we speak right now, but it's also going to be podcasted. It's simulcast on two other AM stations, uh, WDCF AM 1350, which I believe is Plant City, and WZHR AM 1400, which is Zephyr Hills. So we have quite a range we'll be covering, and of course you'll be seeing podcasts and other web broadcasts of this show. And I wanted to point out our website, so for those who maybe cannot listen by radio or have to listen at a later date, they can get the podcast at www.tantalk, that's T-A-N-T-A-L-K, 1340.com. And then I want to take this time to thank a few of our other sponsors, including the St. Petersburg Catholic Worker House, My Place in Recovery Addictions Recovery Program, uh, which can be reached at 727-244-0427. Of course, the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, which is economichumanrights.org. The Uhuru Solidarity Committee, that's www.apscuhuru, that's U-H-U-R-U.org, Refuge Ministries, and the League of Revolutionaries for New America, as well as on the campus of St. Petersburg's uh, campus of the University of South Florida, the Students for a Democratic Society. So as you can see, there are a lot of people involved in this show. If you'd like to find more about sponsoring or advertising in our show you can call 727-278-1547 well we've dispensed enough with the business and kind of doing our blatant promotion here uh we have a special guest on the show today and a very dear friend of mine who i've known many years and uh just has been a tireless advocate in fighting for the rights particularly as it relates to economic human rights of the poor and oppressed uh she ha- is on the top 10 most endangered activists in the country. Wow. She's been arrested more than 200 times, uh, including for a number of things such as housing takeovers and standing up for people's rights, as well as direct action and civil disobedience. And uh, she has been featured on many shows on television um, and, of course, regularly featured in the Philadelphia Inquirer, where she is from. She's from the Badlands of Philly, particularly <laughs> the Kensington area. And we're just real pleased to have Sherry on with us. Uh, Sherry, you there? Yes, I'm happy to be on your show. It sounds very exciting. Uh, is it cold up there? <laughs> Dumb question, right? <laughs> How you doing, Bad Sherry? joke. <laughs> Sherry, I've got uh, Connie uh, with us on the phone, as well as a Crown, who I don't think you've ever met Crown. Uh, he performed uh, for us during the Republican convention protest. You might remember he performed on stage. I know... Uh, Shamaka with the Hip Hop Congress has hooked up with him a bit, but I don't. I don't know if you remember Crown, but Crown. How you is, doing, Sherry? I'm doing good. You got great music, and hello, Connie. All power to the people. So, Hi, uh, Connie, this will be kind of, I guess, a, a roundtable discussion with you for a little bit. And you know, I know Connie and Crown will probably have some questions to ask you, but I, I, I want to start off first asking the significance of the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign. As I mentioned, uh, this is Black History Month, and, of course, last month was the anniversary of Dr. King's uh, birth, and last year was the 50th anniversary of the I Have a Dream speech. Um, A lot of people don't know that the I Have a Dream speech was really uh, a—the event itself was not so much centered around the I Have a Dream. It was really a march for jobs and justice, and then later on, of course, the Poor People's Campaign. So tell us about the backdrop to the Poor People's Campaign and and how it relates to today? Well, uh, the first thing I'd have to say is if uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was alive today, uh, he would be devastated 
to know that the area that uh, he intended to march from, Marks, Mississippi, uh, in 1968, looks much worse than it did uh, at the time that he was planning the Poor People's March. Wow. Um, there's not even a, a marker uh, to mark that important history. Um, there's, you know, abandoned uh, storefronts. And uh, there's uh, oh, an amazing woman uh, who actually just uses her living room uh, to record that important history. And she has, you know, put together a quilt um, and has some of the memorabilia from uh, the original Poor People's March uh, that he was planning before Dr. King was assassinated. Um, but one of the things that he wanted to do uh, before he was murdered was he was in the process of setting up a Poor People's March, and it was a multiracial march, and he was um, uh, shifting his focus uh, to not just be about civil rights, but he was also beginning to talk about uh, the necessity and the importance of human rights. And uh, sadly to say, um, very little people uh, actually talk about that important piece of his history. And here in Philadelphia, I mean, we have basically turned, uh, you know, his memory into a national day of volunteerism uh, and uh, not into a day for fighting for justice. And I think that uh, all of us have a responsibility to be true to his memory and, uh, you know, to lift up uh, the also the important aspects of his life, which was really about uh, asking the hard questions and uh, risking his life and standing up to injustice. Well, I know Dr. King said that uh, nothing comes to us without a demand. And, of course, um, much of the post-63 I Have a Dream speech life of Dr. King has not really been discussed enough, particularly not only his anti-war stances, but uh, his response to the whole nature of of the struggle of the poor and oppressed in the cities and uh, rural areas of our country and um, particularly the effects of this supposed uh, war against poverty, which has become a war against the poor. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you'd address that a minute, too, because I I think, um, you know, this is the anniversary also, if I'm not mistaken, last month was of the, of Johnson's declared war on poverty. And uh, I, I guess reflecting on that and seeing where things are now, you know, we have, uh, a president that can't even fight for a minimum wage beyond just federal workers, and it's not even a living wage. And uh, we have uh, food stamps being cut and, you know, a whole range of things that are happening. And we have, at the first time, I think, since the Depression, uh, a population now where 50% of America is at or below the poverty line. So there's a lot of things going on there. Um, so... And feel free, by the way, anytime, Connie or or, uh, Crown, to ask questions. Um, Sherry, this must seem kind of strange being involved in the struggle for so many years and then, of course, knowing people that have been involved much longer. It almost seems like uh, the twilight zone, a clock being turned back, and ironically under uh, a president that was supposed to be, uh, uh, what was it, everything must change, or what was this phrase, uh, we're going to change it, or I can't even remember his phrase that, that Obama used. Oh, no, uh, no. But, you know, we are I'll changed, something like that. But anyway, I guess now, they, I guess what he meant literally was change, you know, quarters, dimes, and nickels. Right. But talk about right. that a minute. Well, I think that um, uh, for me, it's not even just turning back time, uh, because turning back time, you know, it was bad, but it's really bad now. <laughs> so things are, 
things are much worse now. I mean, I know with, uh, you know, none of us thought that we would be living in a time in history like the Jetsons uh, with electronics and technology and um, where we would see the permanently unemployed. And in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, um, if you're an African-American male, you have a 50 percent uh, chance of either ending up in our men's uh, ridge shelter or the penitentiary. And, uh, uh, you know, things, you know, 50 years ago uh, were bad. And, um, you know, we did things like uh, the New Deal. Uh, but today... Um, when, you know, just like six blocks from where I live on American Street, uh, you know, the entire transportation system was set up in Philadelphia, and this is where Mother Jones, uh, you know, walked with the children to New York City to call attention to the fact that their limbs were being cut off uh, working in the factories. And uh, if she was alive today there'd be no factories to talk about the injustice that was happening to the children. There just isn't employment. The number one source of income in my neighborhood, uh, you know, used to be welfare, and now the number one source of income is drugs. Hmm. So, um, you know, it's like living in war zones, and it's like that in many different large urban areas in different parts of the country. And, uh, you know, I mean, we have to figure out what kind of society, um, you know, we're going to have and we're going to leave for the next generation. Uh, Because if people can't, you know, go and get a job at a factory, um, then we have to ask larger questions like, do people get to eat? Uh, do they get health care? Uh, do they get an education uh, if they can't sell their labor in order to survive? And, you know, clearly the answer to that question in uh, the areas that I've traveled to across the entire country is no, uh, that we do have a housing plan for people in this country, and that's uh, the prison. And no. Uh, we're going to basically eliminate uh, education across the board um, by privatizing uh, our education system. So, I mean, these are, you know, real difficult times ahead. And uh, the most important thing we can do right now is um, to support the leadership of our young people and to teach them... uh, critical thinking skills and to learn from our elders and pass those lessons on and get serious about being revolutionary. Well, you know, one of the things we're trying to do differently with our show is that we want to represent the voice of the oppressed, but not just represent, but be the voice of the oppressed. And uh, we're trying to real hard with this show to have people not only as guests, but people involved in the show itself that are, have been there. And I know, of course, you know my story, Sherry, but I know that both Crown and Connie could share a lot in relation to what you're talking about. And I thought maybe, Connie, if you had some comments or questions to ask Sherry and or comments to offer because of your own experience and what's happening over there. Well, I really appreciate your overview, overview, Sherry. Um, One thing that you know, that uh, in reading Dr. King's book, uh, Why We Can't Wait, he spoke to the, uh, I would say the, well, what I would say, the refusal of white people having an understanding of their plight in this society. So as King traveled throughout the country, he saw impoverished white people that simply refused to, in mass numbers, a link uh, with the civil rights movement so we can push for some of these great societal programs. And what we see now 
is people voting against their interests. Uh, I think George Bush took um, a huge chunk of the Hispanic vote. And uh, you hear all the time now how people have this backlash against uh, some of the societal programs, you know, like voting rights, and you're seeing how uh, various governors is reversing those uh, uh, those processes, as well as it relates to housing, uh, Medicare, and you hear like a a deafening silence from white poor people. Now, what was your um, thinking as to why this has co- this continuance of white people refusal to understand? to build a a coalition with other oppressed people here in America. You asking me? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I think that, um, you know, uh, the, the folks that are in charge, uh, you know, multinational corporations, the Chamber of Commerce, all the folks that actually control our elected officials, um, have played on the history of racism in this country uh, and convinced um, white people uh, that uh, that the majority of the people that uh, need government assistance to feed, clothe, and house themselves and their families and, and education, uh, that uh, that government aid is actually... Uh, assisting African Americans and uh, not white folks. And the reality is is that the majority of the people that uh, live on the dole um, are actually white in this country. And so, uh, you know, uh, many uh, poor folks uh, that are white across the country you know, uh, with their internalized um, uh, shame and buying into the idea that uh, if you're suffering uh, from being poor, that there's something fundamentally wrong with you as an individual. And uh, feeding into the racism in this country, uh, participated in going to the voting booths and voting against their own self-interest. And, um, you know, what we're trying to do uh, is, in the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, is to not ignore uh, some of these backward, you know, ideas of poor white folks that are out there, but begin to really go out there, uh, engage with them, have the necessary conversations with them, and... uh, uh, you know, challenge some of, uh, you know, the ideas that they've been taught. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, so-called progressives and stuff that are out there um, that would just like to uh, ignore these different sections of the population. But by us ignoring them, uh, just leaves them for the enemy. And... Uh, uh, so we think it's important to take up where Dr. Martin Luther King left off and build this multiracial army um, led by the poor. And uh, I think that the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign has been doing something right. Um, and I think that that's reflected in the fact that we have the largest uh, multiracial organization that I know of in the country. You know, I- and um, I think that's the whole key too. One of the things that we're going to emphasize on this show, as 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 it continues, is the idea of solidarity, not charity. Because for too long, the answers to our problems, quote unquote, have come from a top down model of people that have no clue. I was just at the homeless coalition meeting last week. It's actually called the Homeless Leadership Network, and there's only one homeless person. <laughs> That or formerly homeless person that's part of that. So it's kind of ironic that it's called the Homeless Leadership Network. And there has to be a restructuring, as you said, in how things are done and who it's led by. And, you know, that's why 
for us, it's important to bring to the forefront speakers and people that think and, and offer that kind of uh, analysis, which is so important. Uh, Crown, did you have a few things to maybe add to this? And then we're going to be going to a, a short break in a few Well, minutes. it's just, it's amazing. First, I, I, I really um honored and want to say hi. Shout out to Miss Connie Bird. What's up? Uh, but hi, that's, brother. That's, that's a sister or uh, a comrade that I, uh, I did 10 years myself in prison. And um, I had to mention that just because it was it was people like Connie Burden able to listen to over the air. She's been doing it for such a long time, and and so many people draw inspiration. In it, and it's not just in her voice or in her, or in, but it's also her feet to the ground. And 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 so it's it's just just an honor once again to, to be um, involved on the same page with her. But so many of what we we're talking, so much of what we're talking about right now, um, it's. The same similarities to what was being covered today in the meeting at, at the Uhura House, um, and um, I mean, just just e- even as you were just speaking about, okay, even as as you were just speaking about uh, food and prisons and and the, the lack of food and the shortage of of food, and um, how the prison complex, the in- prison industry complex is just getting bigger, and what, what it's, it's just amazing how many. These topics are on the same brain. She's in Philly, Connie's in Tampa, we're here, and on all around the world, the same song. Absolutely. Uh, when we get back from our break, we're going to continue with uh, Sherry, and of course, Connie will be here with us on a regular basis, and Crown and I, and we may take some calls from the audience. Uh, you're listening to The Revolutionary Road on WTAN 1340 AM. We'll be back. Too much corruption in the government. NBC News Radio, I'm Melissa Rayberger. President Obama plans to review drought-ravaged areas of California during his trip to the Golden State next week. Even with all the rain that's been drenching the state over the last few days, NBC meteorologist Dylan Dreyer says it won't make a dent. Homes and highways were flooded north of San Francisco, perhaps 9 to 11 inches in some parts of California. That is still, believe it or not, not going to help with the drought. Beef products that were shipped to four states are being recalled. As NBC's Jenna Wolf reports, the company processed diseased animals unfit for human consumption for more than a year. Nearly 9 million pounds of beef from the California company Rancho Feeding Corporation are now being recalled. Federal regulators from the Department of Agriculture say the meat came from diseased and unsound animals that weren't properly inspected. The agency also classified the health risk as high. The meat was shipped to distribution centers and stores in California, Florida, Illinois, and Texas. This is NBC News Radio. Welcome back. And much of the music you're hearing featured tonight, by the way, is our own Crown Dion here. And uh, I just think this, you know, the songs have just been so uh, poignant and appropriate to what we're looking at here and what we're talking about during this show. Um, 911 becoming a joke. Uh, and we're not talking <laughs> about the actual 911, but the fact that when you call for assistance, uh, Sure. Too often in our cities, particularly in oppressed communities, the police are not there to protect and serve, but they're there to harass Contain. and frisk. And, of course, more recently we saw that the, uh, this is, of course, another whole show topic, which we will get into in the future, but we saw that the current, the elected mayor in New York is uh, apparently overturning. We'll see if it actually happens, uh, the stop and frisk, at least in as far as how it happens. and. That's certainly a show worthy of uh, discussion. But uh, tonight we're discussing, as part of Black History Month, uh, the whole notion of the Poor People's Campaign, and in particular, a kind of child that was birthed from the Poor People's Campaign, uh, and that is the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign. And we're here with the national coordinator, Sherry Honkala, and also, of course, my co-host, uh, Crown Dion and Connie Burton, and we've been talking about economic human rights, and we have been talking about, really, the reality that our system, capitalism, has was built on the backs of the oppressed, was built on the backs of the African slave and the genocide of Native Americans, and uh, the repression of poor folks in general. So this is a very uh, pertinent topic. It's not just past history, but it's current as well. And so... Uh, 
Sherry, you're still there with us, right? Yes, I am. Okay, we're going to try, and I don't know if we'll get any calls coming in, but we'll continue our conversation as we uh, are waiting on calls. But if you have a question for Sherry Honkala, you can call us locally at 727-441-3000 or toll-free 866-826-1340. That's 441-3000 if you're in the 727 area code or toll-free 866-826-1340. And as we're waiting on potential callers, um, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, and of course everybody has talked about it, so maybe we're beating a dead horse here, but talk a little bit about the supposed State of the Union speech. Uh, As a former vice presidential candidate for the Green Party, Um, I'm sure that both you and the former presidential candidate, Jill Stein, have a lot to say about the so-called State of the Union. Uh, Well, I'll let uh, Sherry or Connie talk about that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, I mean, go ahead, Connie. I I was just going to say, you know, um, nothing about, uh, you know, President uh, Obama has uh, disappointed me. In fact, uh, Right. I recognize, you know, through political understanding and teaching that he would pan out to be what he is. Um, if you remember coming out of a war uh, that had the support of Democrats and Republicans uh, under the leadership of George Bush, the whole world had turned sour against America. And uh, people was beginning, uh, and especially in the Middle East, um, not that this was a new understanding, but they understood to what extent uh, American people would go uh, to get what they want, you know, to control their resources. And so Obama was needed. Uh, the face of, quote, unquote, uh, a, a, a person of a, the oppressed class, because we, we don't hear too much about, you know, uh, Obama's grandmama, his mama, his upbringing. We see a black face in the White House. And so when you present that black face of oppression to the world, then people was willing to forgive. And Obama mm-hmm. has gotten a pass on many, many things <laughs> that uh, people have, uh, uh, the good liberals, have just simply, you know, held their tongue uh, the Congressional Black Caucus have ha- held their tongue. Uh, uh, African leadership in this country has not said anything. And so when you hear a speech that uh, don't even mention the poor, can't even talk about, you know, African-American people in this country, can't talk about the fact that uh, we say the new housing for poor people is uh, in mass incarceration, can't uh, talk very much about uh, using his executive power. We don't want to hear, you know, like veiled threats of him going to use it. But we needed to see prime examples of things that he's going to do right now. You know, people can't, there's no affordable housing. You're talking about the great societal programs. But we see, you know, um, most all of them has evaporated in terms of the lack of funding. And so, uh, you know, Obama... Uh, has the support of the ruling class. Uh, he's, in my opinion, more concerned about how history uh, will uh, make notations about him. But uh, I believe that it is time now for the people to put the foul in his feet because he's not going to be reelected. And um, we're in urgent need of seeing some transformation. And this is another point I want to make real quick. You know, as we talk about African history and poor and oppressed people, you know, we are seeing uh, that from generation to generation to generation, we're losing a lot. And we know that a lot of people is losing a lot. But off the backs of African people, we continue to be uh, the pedestal in which this country is held up. Uh, When we talk about, you know, uh, the housing foreclosure, we think about the the loss of value and wealth that black people have lost. When we talk about the prison industrial complex, we talk about the jobs that was created in the rural community. I mean, so much is happening to us that we're going to have to strike at this thing at all angles 
and without poor and oppressed people uh, organizing to put uh, to educate in our communities and then uh, to broaden it by putting pressure on this beast, we're going to find ourselves in a similar situation that we're in now, awaiting for Hillary Clinton to listen to us. Yes, and, and I very insightful, Connie. And before I get a comment from Sherry, we actually have a caller. Her name is Minnie. Uh, she's from Atlanta. Atlanta. Are you there? Yes, Call. I am. Good evening. Thank you for calling in. Well, Good listen, evening. I want to thank you all for having such a wonderful program. Well, thank I you. I think this is something that we really, really need. We need people to really speak truth to power um, and let people know the conditions that poor people are living under with the cuts with uh, welfare, uh, food stamps, and all of the things that are, do, are being done to uh, poor people in this country. And I just wanted to comment <clears throat> about Johnson, President Johnson and President Kennedy when I was growing up as a child. They mostly focused on the poor. They talked about um, uh, war on poverty. <clears throat> they organized, they had programs that was uh, designed for young people who were living in poverty, such as the Job Corps Center and a lot of other social programs. And as far as our current president is concerned, I see nothing or hear nothing that he's talking about as far as the poor. His main focus is on uh, the middle class. And I, I would love to ask him how many black people do he know that's middle class? So he refuses to say the word black or African-American or whatever and deal with some of the social issues that we're having. But um, he, he refuses to, to, to acknowledge that. But when he talks about the middle class, he's basically talking about white people because most of us are not white and most of us are not middle class. Middle class. That's right. So... That's my comment, and well, I want to thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Minnie. And, you know, I'd like to uh, thank you for calling. And, of course, if there are anyone else who would like to call, I'll give you the number again. It's 727-441-3000 or toll-free, 866-826-1340. I want to give Sherry a chance to maybe comment on that and then also speak about what we have been discussing in this last couple of minutes in relation to the State of the Union and Obama. Sure. I mean, I think that both uh, your caller, Minnie, and certainly Connie uh, lifted up uh, all of the important pieces. Uh, I mean, we have to realize that um, we have more people in poverty now than we did during the Bush administration. And that should say something very, very loud, yeah. uh, because we know who's on the bottom of the bottom, and uh, you know that is definitely um, African Americans in this country. And the fact that um, uh, it was also under his administration that we saw um, more people deported uh, than any other president. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, he recently signed the farm bill and uh, we live in a country where it's OK for our lawmakers to take food out of children's mouths mm -hmm. uh, and not go to jail. Uh, but you can, you know, stand on the corner and try to hustle to feed your family and you go to prison, uh, you know. Something really has to be done about these things. Um, the 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 fight now is um, is really just very basic survival. Uh, you know, here in Pennsylvania, uh, with these ongoing climate crises and thousands of people without any uh, heat in the winter time. Uh, either because of shutoffs or uh, because of the recent storm, uh, you know, I mean, people are just going to continue to freeze to death. Um, we're unable to feed our kids. And, uh, you know, we can't afford to, like, sit around and see how much worse this thing is going to get. 
And I think it's really important now in these years to come that we really begin to ask, what is the difference between the Democratic and the Republican Party? Mm. And we have to be honest about this, because if there's not a damn difference, if it really is true that the Chamber of Commerce controls the Democratic Party, then it's wrong for us to continue to encourage our people uh, to go and be slaughtered. And uh, if that is true, we have to begin to break with the Democratic Party and uh, join some other kind of independent political party that's out there and, uh, you know, begin to push those ideas forward. Um, We're the only country that uh, only has two corporate-controlled political parties. Most places in every single place in the world has five, 10, 15 different political parties. And so I think in the years to come, uh, our marches and our fights are going to be not just around, can I eat, can I have some housing, but it's going to be for something as fundamental as political democracy in this country. Right. Yes. And, and, um, because if they can take, we can, t- if they can take myself and Jill um, running for uh, political, pre- you know, president and vice president in this country, and uh, when we tried to get into the debates, and if they can take us and make us take us to a warehouse, handcuff us sideways uh, for nine hours to metal chairs by Secret Service and not have anybody know about it for nine hours when 85% of the population was able to vote for us, that should strike a, a, a sign of absolute fear in the American people. Um, because when they take away something as fundamental as freedom of speech and democracy, all of us are really in trouble. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, I, you know, um, one last time I'll give out the number here uh, if anyone wants to call, but we're kind of winding down with our guest. But I, if you do still wish to call, the number is 727-441-3000 or 866-826-1340. And Crown, I know it looked like you had something you wanted to add, and then uh, we're going to... Uh, course say goodbye to our guest sherry but we are in the future planning on having her on more too so uh crown please yeah it was um it's just really piggybacking on listening to her and how everything like i said was correlating even earlier uh the caller Minnie, she mentioned on um, the snap benefits and one of the things that came up today was that um they are going to per family a dollar forty Per family, uh, per meal, and that's that's kind of per day, and that's kind of that's kind of you know like like that's 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 starving, uh, you yeah. know when you're talking about and then earlier with the stop and frisk, almost a million people arrested uh, due to stop and frisk. Um, that's they, these numbers are staggering, and it's just it's been a beautiful session, um, beautiful meeting today, um, beautiful presentation by um, the sister Connie Burden. And also Sherry and the Call of Many, and I, it's just been another good night. Revolution. Well, Join the revolution. Yes, that's right. Join the revolution. And again, I want to thank, uh, thank you, Sherry, for being on. You'll be hearing more from Sherry and also about the U.S. Social Forum, which is a major gathering for solidarity, not charity, of the oppressed peoples of this country. And really, it grew from something that happened around the world with the World Social Forum. So you'll be hearing more about that and hearing more in the future about other events. So, again, thanks to our guest, Sherry. Uh, thank you for being on. Thank you for having me on. And, and this show is incredibly exciting, and I hope all the listeners will support this show. Thank you, Sherry. That was uh, Sherry Honkala with the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, former vice presidential candidate for the Green Party. And, you know, at this time, to make these shows work, uh, this is really dependent upon you, the listener, and especially uh, we have some groups we'd like to thank right now that have been involved with us. And as soon as I do that, you're going to hear a brief report from uh, 
Crown about the event today at the Uhuru House and a brief report from Connie about what's going on in Tampa. Uh, we'd like to take this time right now to specifically thank uh, St. Pete Acupuncture. They're located at 1624 Central Avenue, St. Petersburg, and their number is 727-823-1700. That's St. Petersburg Acupuncture, 1624 Central Avenue, St. Petersburg, Florida, And you can reach them at 727-823-1700. And they're very much a supporter of the Revolutionary Road radio show, as well as the Poor People's Campaign and the Uhuru Solidarity Committee. And we'd also like to thank uh, St. Petersburg Catholic Worker House. They can be uh, sought out on Facebook at Society of St. Gemma Galgina Catholic Worker House. We'd like to thank My Place in Recovery Addictions Recovery Program. Uh, They can be reached at 727-244-0427 if you have any needs in trying to overcome the disease of drug and alcohol. uh, My Place in Recovery is the place to check out. They're located at 1450 First Avenue North. Of course, our guest uh, is with the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, and we'd like to thank them at economichumanrights.org. The Uhuru Solidarity Committee at uh, www.apscuhuru.org. Refuge Ministries, uh, the League of Revolutionaries for a New America, that's L-R-A, or lrna.org, and the Students for Democratic Society, which is a, a student organization nationwide, but also on the campus of St. Petersburg, uh, campus of University of South Florida, Speaking of which, a big event will be happening there on February 27th at the University of South Florida around the whole issue of black history and particularly talking about reparations. We are going to have Chimaranga Waller of the Uhuru, who's one of the political directors of the Uhuru. Uh, In addition to that, Crown Dion will be performing some hip-hop and a local poet named Life will be doing some poetry. And we'll probably have him on our show at some point. And then, of course, Connie Burton is going to share a little bit as well. And uh, just be sure to stay tuned. There's a lot of events coming up. There's a whole event happening on World Affairs uh, at USF this weekend that I would encourage everybody to check out Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the St. Pete campus. They'll be covering topics like um, the whole NSA spying, what's going on in Africa, uh, what's going on with globalization, and those kind of things. Uh, Go to usf.edu to find out more information about that and uh, with that said i wanted to turn it over to crown for a minute uh, and uh, he's going to just share briefly about what happened uh, at the uh, huru event gathering today and what it was about uh, um once again it was it was more of of based on just uh some of the same stuff we just spoke on the show today um, just taking control of our own lives, our own determination, um, you know, community gardening, um, the weather, shorten, giving us a shortage of food. And so you, for, when you got a shortage of food and you need to learn how to grow your own food, um, learn how to do your own gardening, um, learn how to take control of your own communities, 10 by 10, having a captain on a block, having a um, you know, just having somebody, a soldier on each block to to organize the rest of the blocks. Um, the fact of how the prison industry complex is just um, continuing to get bigger and bigger, billions and billions, one of the, uh, probably number one, um, the stop and frisk. It, 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 if if you can, go on Uhuru TV or Uhuru News and check it out. You get a much uh, more full representation. But just in bits and pieces, it was just a, it was an awesome event. And um, you're talking about the economy, not not depending on currency and not depending on the paper dollar because it's soon going to be very obsolete. Um, talking about e- even just watching the numbers and the dimes in the stock market, of what's going on uh, with money right now, what's going what's going on with the U.S. dollar, and so um, having to be able to buy uh, things such as silver, gold, if you can, um, because that's what's gonna uh, that's what you're gonna be able to get by on doomsday preppers. A lot of that was mentioned because that stuff is not a joke. Um, it's gonna come down to survival, and um, I mean, you, you hear it. You heard it all on the show. You heard Connie mention it. You heard 
Um, so the Sherry mentioned it. Survival is going to be serious, and if you're not organized or educated about why you should uh, be thinking this way or why you should be uh, moving forward or joining or, or educating yourself, then you're, gonna, you're behind the eight ball. And so that's why this process is, is needed, and um, I'm glad to be a part of it. Join the revolution. That's right. Um, and, and once again, I just want to say again, it was a beautiful event today, um, and, and, and I, I wish I was more prepared and brought a better uh, summation of what it was, but uh, from Penny Hess to the Chairman O'Malley Chatilla to Gaeta um, uh, to the Solidarity Committee and whoever had put the full event on, it was very informative and um, it was a good, strong event. Yes, it's uh, interesting, uh, by the way, that the Chairman spoke at Eckerd College and there was uh, serious attempts, I'm guessing by the Alumni Association, but uh, to prevent him from speaking, but he had a wonderful speech at Eckerd this past Wednesday, a number of students got to hear him. Connie, how about uh, what, what's going on over there? I, you know, I've heard there's just some a lot of things going on. Maybe just give us a brief report of what's happening on that side of the pond. Well, if I go to New York, if I go to Alabama, if I go to California, the condition of African people is the same all over this country. Right. It is the same situation. Uh, you know, we are hampered with uh, a military containment by the police uh, that if you ride your bicycle, you're subject to be stopped. Hmm. Young Africans is demoralized constantly with don't being taken out of their cars, hoods uh, pulled up, trunks open, people sprayed it out on the sidewalk. You know, we have a tremendous housing, lack of housing available to poor and working class people here in this city as they uh, uh, begin to uh, talk about tearing down one of the oldest uh, public housing uh, that was designed to take care of poor people. The attempt is to tear that down to force black people from uh, being seen anywhere downtown. All these things is happening under Democratic Mayor Bob Buckhorn. And, you know, it just begs the question, and I really want to appreciate, uh, you know, what Sherry said, how people is being played uh, like a like a, in a ping pong game. They, they run you over here to the, the Democratic Party, and then they run you over here to the Republican Party, and they have you, they have poor pe- people uh, squabbling over these things when we're being under attack by both parties. And whether you're black, white, brown, you're going to have to make a conscious decision if you want to exist as a slave or being free. That's right. You know, if you work all week and you have nothing but pittance and everything is being turned back into the system, or if you can't find a job and being, you know, just heartbroken because you was promised that if you go to school, that somehow and one day you can become prosper and move into the middle class, and you see that's not happening, then we need a new system. This thing can't not be, you know, uh, propped up any longer. We have to see it for what it is. When they tell us that 85 individuals, control the total value wealth of 3.5 billion people, something is wrong. That's, that's right. And, and <laughs> something that's... is wrong. And we got to shake the tree, and if Obama fall out, we got to step on him. <laughs> and if the Republican Party leadership fall out, we got to step on them. But we got to build something that we all will be able to sustain, you know, a livelihood and a life so we can pass something on to the next generation. If not, we're just simply talking, and we're going to be doomed, and it's, it's staring us dead in the face. But I really want to appreciate Brother Crown. And you, Bruce, for inviting me to participate in this process. Yes. And, and, and uh, hopefully, you know, more and more people are joined onto this train called Revolution, the road to revolution. Great. Thank you so much, Connie. And you have been listening to the Revolutionary Road radio show. And uh, we are podcasted. Uh, you can go to www.tantalk1340.com. You can also check us on the web. We'll be on again in two weeks from tonight at 11. And again, thank you for listening. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks. And thank you again. All power to the people. All power to the people. This is Revolutionary Road. Good night, Sister Connie. Good night, nation. Good night, everyone.